Uh, hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to my metabolic speed method for athletes. I worked on this guide for a long, long time, both obviously as myself as an athlete who fought in the same weight class for a decade, having coached athletes that have gone from thin weight to heavyweight, have stayed at thin weight, have found the right division for them, have optimized their weight for performance, for longevity, all the different areas. And going through this, you'll notice that this is a very specific approach for uh, anyone who's an athlete where you are trying to fuel for optimal performance. And this is a big difference than when, we, when I work with someone that say is fueling themselves for just body composition or just to get healthy again, or just like all of those are all very important and they have very similar underlying pieces. But what is special in this area is I've worked with way too many athletes, especially young athletes, but I have athletes that are older too that don't understand some of the basic aspects of what we're trying to do. So they start to try and do what we always did. Let's train more because they're not getting fast enough results just from training. So they add more volume to their training. What I want to do with you is make sure that we get all the parts to work together. It's training, nutrition, recovery, and mindset together. And when we get that, we do what I call time travel, meaning if training is breaking our body down, the goal of training then is actually to come back stronger. And we do that through the recovery phase. And how do we recover better? From sleep and good fueling and balanced hormones and de-stressing ourselves. This is what I do mean by the metabolic speed method. I'm going to take you through this guide really quickly here. We'll start here, metabolic speed. You'll see it's S is for sleep. This is where we recover and we repair our bodies the most. It's the most time you're not moving too much, hopefully, unless you're a sleepwalker. Number two is psychological stress, right? Stress, good and bad stress, training stress, all these things are stressors, but psychological stress usually means that our body is producing the hormone cortisol. And that isn't bad in itself, but when we get too much cortisol that inhibits recovery, what do we want to do? We want to recover faster. Yes, that's how we get better sooner. Number three is environmental stress. Things like sunshine, sleeping in a dark room, uh, mood throughout the day. These are very, very important things for environmental stress. Having good friends, good thoughts, good actions around us, uh, good teammates, all these things are really important. Number four, the E is for exercise. This is our training alignment with training that we're not doing stuff. Uh, I gotta get stronger, I'll go do powerlifting. Well, if you're trying to get better at anything else, it, it may not make sense. So I want alignment in your training. You're not doing exercises that are hurting you more or breaking down on an old injury. They're helping make you stronger for the desired goal, which leads to, as I put there, adaptation. And finally, the last D in the SPED method is diet. This is fueling and output. So make sure you have the right fueling for your sessions and you're not wasting energy when you don't. So let's get into it. There are four major goals for phase one. They are simple. I'll let you read the aspects here. But number one, the easiest thing you can do to clean up your diet is focus on single ingredient foods. Now, that doesn't mean you eat one ingredient, just it's one piece of chicken. No, it means you can make it into things, uh, right? You can have uh, chicken with broccoli and make it into a stir. Yeah, you can do all of that. But the, the majority of the meal is made up of single ingredient foods. That means if you look at the side of it and you go, as Cheetos are single ingredient, it's one, one piece and you go, well, what's here? And it's a whole bunch of stuff you can barely even pronounce. And look how many ingredients, I know I'm bored. It's not single ingredient. So it's chicken, it's a carrot, right? Things like this broccoli, right? Broccoli doesn't have a marketing department. That's usually a good rule of thumb. If the food you're choosing has a marketing department, you may question it, right? All the avocados are cooled out, okay. Number two, and we want to, again, we want to do that about 90% of the time. So you're still going to eat out. You still get to have a, yes, all those things are fine, but that should be the, the sides of it, not the core. The core of your diet isn't bread and bread is not a single ingredient, right? Number two, within that people go, what's, what, what do we focus on? What's my macros? What's this? Your only goal here with macronutrients in this phase is to make sure you get protein at every meal, right? What type of protein? Well, ideally, single ingredient protein. Protein shakes are great. I have a link for you there. Protein at every meal because if training is breaking our body down, it's how we recover is how we build back stronger. And no, any protein is not going to make you big and gain weight. And this, right? There's so much more to it than that. And people trying to give you uh, an explanation of that is very simplistic and 
just right away, I'm like, okay, you don't know what you're talking about. Ah, I ate protein. I gained 20 pounds. Really? Is that how that works? Huh? Okay. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't all the other parts. It wasn't all the refined foods, the foods that uh, irritate our gut, slow down our me metabolic function, don't make us sleep well, increase our stress in our life. Maybe there's other things to this than just I eat protein. Protein is good for you. I want you to know that. And that's the core. Every meal we have protein. Number three is we build balanced meals to have energy and mental clarity. So you want output when you are training. We, we, we're going to need some carbohydrates there. Don't be afraid of carbs. When you're studying, we may want to lean on more balanced meals. And there's, there's a method to this I'm going to teach you. And finally, the hydration focus. We call it cutting the crap. And that's an acronym. All right. Macros in the focus. I go through uh, protein. Why we start with protein. Carbohydrates. Yes, we want faster burn, burning fuel for our workouts. You don't show up to the racetrack with no gas in your car, right? Carbs are your gas. Fats are like slow, steady burning long term. Right? So it's like a diesel truck with a steady. So you need fats in your diet too. Fats don't make you fat. Excessive calories, especially refined carbohydrates that we don't use in a day, that gets stored as that, and that doesn't help us perform better. Okay. So nothing wrong with fats. They're good. Think of that as your long term. So if you're like at school all day, you may not need a hundred grams of carbs <laughs> during that, right? Nothing wrong with some. And we'll show you in the plates. That's all good, but you don't need to go crazy. Like we're not using it. What do we eat? We go back over that. The single ingredient food focus, the protein focuses. Here's some of my favorites and protein shakes. You can take more, some of them down here at the bottom, I mentioned tofu, Greek yogurt, milk, dairy. These ones are great, but it's hard to get so, that much protein in a day that we need from those, okay? Number two is the plate method. Every meal you'll see here, I want you to have a balanced plate. That's a protein, a veggie, a healthy fat, and then choose some carbs or starches, right? You may wanna have more of that during a workout. And the plate method goes like this. You know, about a quarter of your plate is gonna be protein, you know? About an eighth of that plate will be some fats and the rest fill in with lots of veggies. Lots of it. That's great. Those are all good uh, there. That's a really good anytime plate. For a workout one, we're going to add in, again, what do I say? Those foods that are not in that 10%, right? Yeah, some pasta, potato. Those are all good. Rice, there's not, again, there's nothing wrong with it. We're not afraid of it. Want to use it the right way for you to fuel your body. Okay, so that's the difference. This is a really anytime meal is good. Protein is a focus pre and post workout, make sure you have that, make sure you have some fuel in your race car. Otherwise uh, it's not gonna work in your fuel again. It's not Cheetos, it's not a Snickers bar. And that's not what we want. We want single ingredient most of the time. Same for snacks, snacks, protein and fat focus are gonna be wonderful. Carb focus balance is awesome. We want that, right? The hydration focus, cut the crap, carbonated sodas, drinks with refined sugars, right? Artificial sweeteners, diets is not a magic loophole. And then P is pretending you don't have access to water. I couldn't get to the water fountain. So I bought this Coke. I don't buy that. Okay. Hydration tips, make sure that you're drinking regularly throughout the day. You need water. We have to reprogram ourselves to be drinking regularly. Unless it's the very end, we're not trying to cut water four weeks out of a tournament, man. That's, that's not it. That's not how we make weight. Okay. Finally, the recap, single ingredient foods, protein focus, balanced meals, protein shakes are great, cut the crap, and you are on your way to feeling great. Once we do this for a bit, usually uh, the first couple months we focus on this. Once we get really confident and consistent here, then we're going to go on to phase two, have a little Q&A, and that's it. If you have any questions, message me directly in your true coach, and I can't wait to help you on your metabolic speed method diet. All right, thanks, guys.